Well, hello, and thank you for joining us for Word Online. This is not your parents' word. If you haven't used Microsoft Word Online in a while or ever, I feel pretty confident that you have some surprises, things that you didn't know coming your way. So I would like to encourage you, please, if you are an attendee in the webinar today, to go ahead and use the Q&A. There is a Q&A section. And we have Anna joining us who will be monitoring the Q&A and jumping in to respond and letting us know if there's any questions that we have. Okay, looks like we've got some people on the Q&A, so that looks good. My guest today, I am super excited to have Peter Leonard. And Peter is the head of Word and he is a super cool guy. So Peter, if you want to unmute yourself and introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Hey, my name is Peter Leonard. I'm the um, group program manager for Microsoft Word. And, um, I'm happy to join you here today to uh, walk you through some of the features we have in Word and uh, answer any questions. Okay. So you're on mute. Peter and I have a long standing relationship that goes back months where we chat about Word frequently and he is super helpful and I'm really excited about all of the features that he's been able to show me about Word Online that we can share with you because there's some really neat things that I had no idea it would do. But I have a really important question for you, Peter. When You're not going to ask me this question, are you? <laughs> you said you wouldn't ask me this question. You said we wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> one space after the period or two. Like, I don't know why you're making it into this a one space versus two space thing. Like, it's a stylistic thing. People have different preferences. I think there are some people who like one space and there's other people who have a preference for two spaces. And I think we need to support kind of, well, it's, yeah, different it's styles. A preference. I mean, we don't use typewriters anymore. That's true. But, you know, I feel like Word has already made the definitive decision. So I saw someone tweeting out, well, my yeah. Word has made the decision for you. So now in Word, true or false, it'll give you an underlying squiggly if you have two spaces. Okay, you got me. Okay, yes, <laughs> it's true. We came down on the actual one space and, you know, it's definitely a stylistic thing. And if we use two spaces, you know, you can always ignore and we'll always continue to actually experiment, but we've definitely experimented with this and, um, Yep, the one spacers came out, you know, as the winners, and um, that's what we're going with. And uh, so you'll see that more shortly and probably later on this week in Word Online. You'll see if you put in two spaces, we'll suggest that maybe you shouldn't use two spaces after a period. You should um, use one space. Well, Grammar Girl says you should use one space. So I'm a one spacer and I'm 43 years old. And yes, I had to relearn to only put one space, but it is possible, my friends. It is possible, and Word Online is going to suggest to you that one space is right, which is what I like. So yeah, We're going with one space. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're looking at today is word.office.com. Of course, you can access Microsoft Word on the desktop application, but you can also access it on the web. And that is going to be our focus today. We are not going to go to the desktop at all. And we're really excited to show you some of these new features that I honestly had up until a few months ago, no idea even existed. And even though I've been really diving into Microsoft Word recently, Peter was able to show me all these things yesterday that I'm like, wait, what? I didn't even know that. So I'm pretty sure that you're going to be excited to see some of the things that you are able to do. So I'm going to attempt to screen share. And while I do that, I'm going to put Peter on the screen. 
so that he can share with you some of his how the evolution of Word Online came to be. OK, so well, firstly, well, obviously we all know for a long time we had Word Desktop and that's been around for quite a long time and it's a fantastic product and it's very powerful and we continue to improve on the Word Desktop on both the Mac and on Windows. We put a lot of energy into that over the years and we continue to put a lot of energy into that. And I would say for a while there, we didn't put a lot as much energy into Word Web and but in the last two years now we've really accelerated the amount of effort we're putting into word web and really we're playing a lot of our our first innovations and where we're actually experimenting with first and foremost is with word web and you'll see month by month we actually improve the product we try out new concepts we introduce new features and as alice pointed out at this stage over the last kind of year and a half We've added a bunch of functionality really to focus on making it Word e Web easy to use on a day to day basis for those who actually prefer the actual browser. For those who prefer the desktop, we still have your back, but I know Alice, you're nodding your head. I, but um, <laughs> for the, I personally use the actual browser um, my, as my main go to in work. For me and my team, when we're working together, we use the browser as our main go to. But you know, again, people have different preferences. So the um, so you'll see that going forward. You'll see over the next kind of year, we'll see a slew of innovation and capabilities are actually going to come to Word Web, and um, we'll yeah. go through some of them now. You had asked, what are the top five features that people would like to see in Word? So if you want to tweet me at Alice Keeler, uh, what are your top features you'd like to see Word Online have in the next six months? And we're going to forward those on to Peter Leonard. That'd be great. Yeah, so I'm excited to see what people, what features they would like. I, of course, will just text message you all of my feature requests, including my number one that I have right now is I would really like a Minecraft font. No, wait, that's number two. My number <laughs> one is to drag Bitmoji. I know, number, your number one is Bitmoji. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can, I can add Bitmoji though, I can. I, I right click and I just do copy and it pastes real nice into there. But you know, the dragging, what, whatever. So that's coming, it's on the list, but my number Out two. on the list. Minecraft font. Oh, yeah, just saying, just saying. Okay, let me get over back onto here. So here I am in word.office.com, and what you will notice when you come to word.office.com is you can make a blank document. There's a variety of templates that you can choose from. And I just really love this with the recommended. It knows what documents you might be interested in because you have some sort of interactions with recently. And you can see here that Peter Leonard edited this recently. So I'm like, oh wait, my collaborator has used this. I should probably jump in and see what changes they made and what paces I need to do. So I can click on it here from recommended. And if I scroll down, I can see recent documents that I've edited. And actually what I've also done is I've done the three dots on the stripe here and notice my options. I can open it in the browser, which that's my preference, or you can open it in the desktop, which as Peter pointed out, could be your preference. You can share, copy the link, and then this says remove from pin, but you'll notice if I do this with another one, it gives me the option to add it to pin. So if I go over here to pin, these are the documents that I wanna get quick access to. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. And here I am in my Word document online that Peter and I have been putting together. So these are our favorite features in Word. And I put this little note in for myself to use Control Plus to make sure that I am as zoomed in as possible for all of you since we are going to use a Word document instead of PowerPoint slides. Of course. So the first thing I want to show you is that in this document, we have set it up with headings. It's really important that when you create something, use headings. I'm going to highlight, go to styles, and notice all of these styles. One of them gives me headings. 
that makes it more accessible for screen readers. But then also on the view tab, I can choose navigation and all of those headings come out on the side where I can jump ahead or go back in the document really quickly and easily. All right, and then Peter, don't be afraid to jump in yeah, and yeah. make comments. So I got that one. Now, one of my favorite things about why I like to use browser versions is version history. And so I'm gonna go file info and you'll see that it has this version history option. So Peter and I have been collaborating on this document quite a bit back and forth. He's been doing some of it by himself and I've been doing some of it by myself and some of it we've been online together at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a look at that version history. And version history to me is really important when you're talking about collaboration. You know, it's a little scary to say, hey, go ahead, edit my document. Just put whatever words on there that you want that I never mentioned. Uh, maybe that's a little or a lot intimidating. What if they mess it up? And I've had that happen. I had started a blog post in a document and I asked somebody, hey, could you just give me a few comments on it? And they literally rewrote the whole thing. Not only was it no longer in my voice, they had terrible grammar. I'm like, no, no, no problem, right? Because I just go back to the version history and I say, okay, when's the last time I used this document by myself? So you'll see over here on the right hand side is that version history. And you can save a copy, revert it back to what it looked like before someone messed it up. And Peter, did you have any extra comments about version yeah. history? It's funny when you're talking about that feature, I always think it's like it's your one lifeline feature. It's like you might only use it once every six months, but boy, when you need it, you really need it. I had to use it there like last month. I had a similar scenario to you. I was working on a document and then the next morning I came in and somebody had deleted some tables of mine. Oh, I don't know whether they did it deliberately or intentionally or whatever. It was an accident. But boy, I had a, needed that document that day. I was so happy to be able to go back and just get the document the day before. So it's that once every six months, it just saves your bacon. And it's just a, I'm really glad it's there as a feature. So you can see how many times, I mean, just yesterday, how many times Peter and I went in and edited this document at the same time and individually. I think it's just kind of cool to see whether or not someone's been slacking off. Like you supposed to be working on this with me and I don't see you in here at all. <laughs> and for teachers, I get that a lot. It's like, how do I know a kid even worked on it? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go back and down here a little bit. And larger font. So this is one of the things that I definitely was thinking about as I was working on this today is that I need to use larger font since we're planning on screen sharing this presentation. So I really appreciate this feature is that when I highlight text, this little toolbar comes up right here where I can increase the size because otherwise, notice I'm not on the home ribbon. I'd have to go to the home tab in the ribbon and choose my font size after bringing the mouse up to the top. So it saves me a lot of time to be able to have those edits right in there. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it again. And notice I can really quickly get to styles and adding comments. Right in the document. All right, now we had a little bit of an argument over who got to show this one because apparently this is both of us, one of our favorite features. If you don't know what Sway is, it is a web page. And Sway is really cool because it's a nice way to quickly make something visually attractive. Now, I don't want to bang on Word, but let's be honest, right, Peter? It's not as exciting as Sway. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now you're asking me to choose between two of my children, okay? <laughs> Sway is a great as like, if you want something that looks like a web page that looks is dynamic and reflows to whether you're reading on a mobile phone or you're reading a large screen, it is great for that. It's great for incorporating media. And I think, you know, the good thing is we put a lot of work into this word to Sway where we're using intelligence to kind of break apart your document and convert it to this kind of beautiful web page that Alice is going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. All right. 
I'm still going to say, like, I haven't really ever opened up a Word document and thought, wow, this text is so cool. But I look at Sway, I'm like, this is so cool. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the file menu. And you'll notice if you are an Office 365 customer that you can choose transform. Look how easy this is. It just says transform to web page. I like sometimes I actually I do. I open up all my documents as a sway just for fun. I'm like, what does it look like? Transform to web page. Choose my style. All right. I did this earlier just so I didn't have to wait for it to load. I can't remember which one I did. I choose transform. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the one that already loaded. It can take sometimes about one or two minutes for all of the pictures that are in the Word document to load up into Sway, but it's pretty quick. So you'll notice that it took my heading, put it at the top, took my Word icon. Whoa, did you see that? Parallax. I mean, you just don't get that with Word. I'm just saying is that, you know, the images jump out at you. It put it all in there just quite beautifully, I think. And I would say the good thing about this is then if you actually view this on a mobile phone, it looks great as well because we adapt the design and reflow it exactly and optimize it for mobile. So it's great for consuming content on mobile as well. That's, that's a great tip. So if you're, especially if you're including images and things in your Word document, think about just, look how fast that was. I just did file transform and now I have this mobile friendly, beautiful version. Now, obviously, if you're wanting to collaborate with people, this is not necessarily the way to go to share a collaborative Word document. But when you want to communicate with parents and students and just have a, a visually attractive way to do it, this is like my, my I just get a little giddy about it, to be honest. <laughs> OK, so what I know you'll notice is that I have used headings. This is a heading three, but I made the font a lot larger than what if you look up here in the styles that heading three normally looks like. I changed the font and I need all of my headings here to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight. I'm just going to highlight the Y because what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the formatting. So when you come up to the ribbon, you'll see this little format painter paintbrush icon. I use this frequently and I click format painter so that when I highlight other text, it takes the formatting and applies it. So the same font size, the same font color, and other elements about the formatting without pasting the content. Peter, how often do you use Format Painter? How many times an hour? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I would, I'd say it's one of my most frequently used features. Um, definitely super useful just for getting that consistency in terms of font and look and feel of a document. It's just vital for that. Yeah, well, even notice right now I just pushed enter and I'm like, wait a minute. I really just wanted to have regular text. And if you notice up in the in the ribbon here, it actually says that it's normal text, so it's not matching at all. So I'm just going to highlight just I only need one character format painter. Whoop, all is right with the world. I mean, that literally just saved me hours. I mean, how many times have you been like, what font, what font was I using again? And choosing it individually. So Format Painter, I think, is a real time saver. Now, Microsoft Word really does this very well, is Translator. I, I live in the Central Valley of California, and we have a large population of Spanish speakers and Hmong speakers and a whole bunch of languages. And translator is really a huge help. So if a student has Microsoft Word, they're able to highlight, right click, and choose translate. Now this is really, really tiny and I apologize, but when I choose translate from the right click, I can also get it from the view menu. I don't know if you know this, there's this little tiny, tiny triangle in the corner of the ribbon, so you can expand it and collapse it. So sometimes I'm just like, I, where is this thing? Wasn't it? Oh, did I put it in the wrong place? Ah, that was under the view menu. Translate, sorry, review, view. It sounds very similar. I knew I had it. I, I used the right click to get to translate. 
Um, but again, it, it, when it's real small, sometimes it's harder to identify in the collapse. So I like to spread it out, click translate, and I can translate the selection for the entire document. Now, what I really appreciate about translate hmm. selection. Say that again. Apparently, Alexa is listening to me. Mm. <laughs> so what I really appreciate about Translator is it actually does it right over here in the sidebar. It doesn't have to edit the document for everyone. So if I'm collaborating with someone who does not necessarily speak the same language that I do, that's OK. I can highlight and view the translation over in the side. Now, if this is my actual document for myself, like I've made a copy for a student. So this is their document. They're editing their document. They can actually swap it out. They could type it in Spanish and then use translate to switch it over to English to submit it to me. So either way, if I have a student who's not a native English speaker, I can allow them to do their work in the language that allows them to feel most comfortable if it's not an English activity. Like I want to see your thinking and thought process to the learning objective. That's more important. So I can use translator, the student can use translator, and it's just a way that we can both be on the same page, literally. Okay. Editing and suggesting. So if you look in the upper right of your document, you'll notice I've defaulted to editing mode. I'm obviously able to edit. I am editing. But I think it's kind of rude when you are collaborating with someone to just edit their doc their words like I wrote that. So Peter, maybe what you could do is show how we switch to reviewing. And that allows someone to insert comments and suggestions as the default rather than editing straight up my content. So you can see the icon. Peter is now this seriously never gets old because being in the same document as someone else and like, oh, they're typing where I'm typing. We can hear that he is typing on this. So he's in reviewing mode. You can see that he has suggested maybe. I can see that is Peter Leonard who suggested that. And. <laughs> Yeah, this is a super useful feature we find just in terms of where you want to actually work in documents and try and finalize them together or report whatever. It's a super useful feature. It is. I, I really like it. So and we can transform it right here at the top. I'm not going to switch down to viewing because it'll actually take it into viewing mode and have to refresh the whole document. So I'm going to switch back to editing. And if you're not familiar with Immersive Reader, I think this is the reason to use Microsoft Teams and Word and the Edge browser on Chromium is actually quite amazing and it has Immersive Reader built right into it. And of course, it's built right into Office. So from the View tab, if I highlight my text, I can choose Immersive Reader. And it's trying to give me some tips. All right, got it. So I'm able to do a lot of things with Immersive Reader, including increase the font size. But what, at a base level, what it's going to do is Immersive gonna... Reader. Accessibility is for everyone, not just for those needing a screen reader. It will read it to you, but also allows you to highlight nouns, verbs, increase font spacing. That's really helpful for a lot of people. I'm 43. I now need glasses. Being able to increase the font size is really great because it doesn't edit the document itself. So speaking of accessibility, there is an accessibility check. Check accessibility here on the review tab. And so you can see here it's saying, Alice, you don't have alt text on any of these pictures. So this is one of the things I really appreciate about Microsoft Word is it really suggests to me that I need to 
include alt text so that it's more screen reader friendly. So what I'm going to do is on the view tab, I'm going to select my pictures. It was the view tab. No, the picture tab. Yeah, picture tab, excuse me. On the picture tab, I'm going to select my picture and do alt text. There we go. When you're on a uh, video chat, sometimes things load a little. So this is what would load and be shown if the picture could not load. So it's really important to go through and do that and add your alt text. And I think I have one last piece. If you haven't tried dictation in Word, you are missing out because I think on my phone, I live in voice typing. If you're getting a text message from me, and you're like, what the heck? She's clearly voice typing. So here I am using dictate. Here I am using dictate from the toolbar. I was able to click the little microphone. It is listening to what I'm saying. So this is a way that students can get their ideas down on the page, period. Catching up, I talk very fast. And not have to worry about their typing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stop that. Let's go ahead and switch over to Peter. He's <laughs> gonna show his killer features. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna go now. It's hard, Alice, to when you ask me what are my favorite features. I mean, these are my favorite features today. Like I have lots of favorite features, so uh, I'm just going to show you the ones that I actually happen to like. Um, I'm going to focus on today. Right, so, so sure, yeah, sharing your screen. Tell me if I can see my screen. Yep. Yep, I got it. OK, so a couple of things. OK, um, sharing. So sharing is right up here in the share button. Uh, so just a really handy way if you want to share a document with somebody, you just click on share and you can actually enter in their email address. You can specify the permissions, like whether you want, you know, anybody with the link can actually edit this document or anybody in your organization or your school can have it with, it with the document if you want to just restrict it to your school or people with existing access or specific people. You can then set, hey, do you want to allow editing or not allow editing? Or do you even want to block download? So some really good kind of permissioning features here about when you actually want to share a document. And you can just add in a message there if optionally if you want to share. If you don't want to do that, you could just copy a link to the document. You could then put it in mail and send it on to them. So that's a really good way of just sharing if you want to send it with your colleagues or if students want to share a document with each other. Um, one other thing that I'm just going to show is you'll see here when you share a document or when you're working together a document, you'll see in my version here there's these blue dots. Now, Alice, I don't think I actually showed you these blue dots before. No, yeah, what are those blue dots? Well, what do you think they are? Bullet points. No, they're just little icons that show me since the last time I opened up this document, what are the changes you made to the document? Wait, so how do you call, get that? You get it automatically. So we get we call this catch up while you're away. So when I was going into the document, it was I was very able to see these temporary little blue dots that showed me the changes you'd made to the document since the last time I was in the document. So it's a very easy way for me to catch up on the changes you've made since the last time I looked at the document. Is that dog food? Uh, no, you should have that too. This is all in production. Okay, so. because that looks new to me. Oh, it is, but it is new, but it's a great feature. It is a great feature. <laughs> okay. So then the other kind of uh, feature I'm going to talk about, once you share a document, and uh, then is commenting. And you know, commenting is pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. It's what, you, what do you imagine? You can either do a comment this way, and I can say, um, check out this section. That's one way I could do it. Um, or I could um, maybe highlight this section here and say new. Mm -hmm. and say, you know, I can do love voice dictation. 
And by the way, on the voice dictation, I just want to make a call out for voice dictation on Word Mobile. We put a lot of energy into voice on Word Web, and we've also put an equal amount of energy into voice dictation on Word Mobile. And great kind of companion piece there for people who want to work that way. Um, another way you can do um, comments is you could highlight a section here and right click. So you'd be able to see then new comment, and that's how you can actually get your comments as well. Um, <clears throat> So let's keep going down here. So that's comments. And I've left these kind of instructions, these steps in the document that myself and Alice are working on, which I think Alice, you're going to share this later on. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my blog when we're done. So this document will be available to anyone. Yeah. And when you're in an organization, if you're in your school, another neat feature is you can actually app mention somebody in your organization in order to do to in your comments in order to get them notified that you've actually left a comment for them. Here's another feature that um, we didn't have this in Word Web for quite a while, and we delivered this last year, and there's a lot of people who are really delighted that we actually got around to doing this. It's track changes. Um, so if any of you have actually kind of um, worked on a document with the multiple people, and you want to track the actual changes. If you're the person who wants to be the editor at the very end of the day, you want to be able to accept and deny people's changes. You can turn on track changes for everyone or just mine. So for example, if I do it for everyone, and then when Alice, if you start actually typing somewhere on that section there, I'll just start seeing Alice's track changes start appearing. Great. And then I can go in here and I can then you know, accept this one or can reject it. Which is a great capability that if you're actually collaborating together, you can see each other's changes and you can actually have edit capabilities over whether accept or deny those changes. So I'm going to turn off track changes, but you can have it for yourself or just for everyone. Yeah, that's awesome. Here's a, a really, this is a really new feature that we just launched last month and um, we put a lot of effort into this feature and it's the new editor where we put a lot of investment into how we use AI to offer really good kind of grammar and spelling support in Word. So I'm going to show you what we have here. And if you click on this feature here called editor, this is the new spelling and grammar editor that we have in Word. Expand the... Um Toolbar, the ribbons, so that yeah. it looks larger. Let's do it here. Yeah. And what editor does is it goes through your document and it gives you an editor score. It's 186%. Then I have a hover over these last two bits here. It can say, hey, if you accept or ignore um, spelling suggestions, you can increase your score by 8%. If you do grammar suggestions, you get another 2%. If you do refinements, you get 4%. And again, when we designed Editor, our mental model was more, these are just suggestions. We're not trying to enforce um, a certain kind of you know, uh, style. Like Alice, you brought up earlier on about single space and double space. Again, we will always suggest, hey, will flag double space, but you can always ignore it or accept it. It's up and to you. When you say double space, you mean two spaces after the period, not double spaced. Yeah, it's double space. So <laughs> then you can, go through, <laughs> you can go through the spellings. So let's go through a few of these spellings. So here, there's nine spelling mistakes here. Um, okay, it says I'm because it capped, capped that one. It says, hey, to do's, it should really be to do's. Most of the spelling mistakes looks like they're mine which is kind of slightly embarrassing, but Alice must have been really good. Yes, they all are mine. And then we can go to grammar and see what it says for grammar. So it picked up this one, maybe editing, because there's an extra space there. It corrected that one. And then it says can't. I obviously typed in last night, C-A-N-T, and it says can't. And uh, let's do another one. Uh, clarity. This is a good one. Um, let's see what it has for clarity. Uh, let's go for the next. Let's go another one. Um, clarity. 
ignore that one. It says instead of using accurate, use correct or use exact. So OK, maybe I'll take exact. Um, instead of saying when you want additional assistance, it said when you want more. And again, these are just suggestions in order to make your writing more uh, clear. Uh, did you make this for me knowing that I'm a math person? Probably. <laughs> Wait, oh. <laughs> so you can go through all the Clara. Another one is concise. And I are. He made editor for me. And um, one thing that I know when we actually talk to a lot of people who use Word and write documents is one question that I asked is, what are you doing when it's late at night and you're sitting, we're looking at your document and you're not writing content, but you're frustrated. What's going on? And it turns out that a lot of people, what they're frustrated in is conciseness. They've got their document down, they've got their report, they've got their lesson down, but they're trying to make it more concise. They're trying to make it less wordy. And it's late at night, you've got your content, you need to get your, your document in the next morning, and you're trying to get it more concise. So let's see what comes up with conciseness. Okay, instead of saying relatively steady, it says steady. Okay, I'm being a little bit too wordy there. That's what I did last night. Um, this says instead of maybe editing, just say editing. Great. Um, formality. If you want to make your writing more formal, it says saying I'm do I am. Same again. You will. So you got the hang of that. Um, another one would be let's say punctuation. So grammar. Great. There's that one there. Um, Another one one might be interested to do if we actually said, say we had a gentleman, if I wrote a gentleman's agreement. Sorry, I I thought there was notes that didn't get. What? I changed your mind. I apologize. I messed, you... I messed up your document. I apologize. <laughs> no, yeah, that's okay. So that was there last night, wasn't it? It was there actually a few seconds ago and I thought, oh, he missed that, that that was one of our notes that didn't get taken out. No, that was, um, so if I had version history, I would just go back and I would actually, um, I'd pick that one up. So that's going to pick up inclusive language in a few minutes. It'll flag that one as, that's not very inclusive language to be using. So that'll pick that up in a few minutes. And then down here, you can see it's got these statistics, um, readability, so for readability, it's using this flight reading E score. So a score higher than 60 indicates short words and sentences. So distinct words. And then also, how long would it take to read it? Like it'll take about three minutes to read this document and about five minutes to speak it. So, and then the other one that you'll see coming soon is acronyms. So when myself and Alice were working together in our folder here in our, in our SharePoint site, I've got this other document called Famous Math uh, Female Mathematicians. And down here, down the bottom, I have this section, just a, a random paragraph talking about ARPA, the Advanced Research Projects Agency. And that's in another document. And what the acronyms feature will do is it'll actually detect that, hey, ARPA, I don't know what that acronym is, but it'll actually pick up the acronym in the other document and it was suggested here in editor or in, the, in any content you might have in your organization. So if you've got acronyms that you're using in your organization, you just type the acronym and if you, it'll actually correct and say, help you actually put the real meaning of the acronym in really easily at one click. So that's editor. Um, another uh, feature that I use a lot, especially when we're working with people, is coordinate with follow-ups. One thing that we've noticed that when we watch people who actually create Word documents, is they put a lot of placeholders in and we do this in PowerPoint as well where we might put a to do don't forget to put this section in or square brackets you know Alice insert your task image here we put these kind of placeholders for go do so Word has a very easy way to create um, these kind of follow-ups so if I say insert if I do this sorry just um, you follow up and do insert um, table here. Yeah. It creates this kind of special formatted text. And then if I go and say then 
I can go look at say all the um, the follow ups later on. See all follow ups. And here's all the follow ups. These are the tasks that I need to do in the document. These are things for me to do before the actual documents completed. This yep. concept of follow ups. Now you can also do here if I have an insert. Oh, that's awesome. It is. It's pretty awesome. And you, you know, for example, uh, say this one here, insert task image. I can do uh, smart lookup. If I want to include, say, an right. image for tasks, and I can then go down and say, okay, let's do add this image here and inserted the task image and then it's it's gone that's it, it did there and it's very easy then to resolve one you can just resolve a follow-up it's resolved um another way just as a just as a tip instead of if you want to do new follow i did new follow-up you can do here's a little kind of sneaky shortcut key you can do this so i did square bracket followed by square bracket well i'm trying yeah. that and then you can just type your your follow-up and that'll appear in your tasks so alice if you're writing a book and you're actually going through and putting placeholders oh my you God. all your tasks to do <laughs> you can then later on you can go back down and say wow did i actually do all the things i need to do in the document and go through there's all your follow-ups okay and over time we'll be actually integrating these follow-up tasks with planner so you can see all your tasks across all your documents and presentations in one place so here's a really this is all my i love all these features but this is a really great one is do more with search so you remember when um alice was thinking about where's that translate button then she was hunting pecking and she was looking for that translate button well what alice could have done i didn't tell her because i didn't want to put her out of her misery <laughs> is she could have done that type translate and straight away she gets the translate capabilities. That's what I should have done. So, I think where they are, but once in a while I'm just like, what? Well, I don't even remember sometimes where uh, there's so many capabilities in Word, it's sometimes hard to remember where they are. So this tell me what you want to do, this search capability is just fantastic because you can search across all the feature set in Word um, with just what with your natural language and you'll get to the command. You don't have to be hunting and pecking. Um, another feature that I'm, is coming soon, and I can't demo it today, but I'm going to talk about it, is this idea of reusing content. So when you're um, working in a document, often we end up reusing the same content again and again. It might be some paragraphs you wrote several months ago. It might be a table that you wrote last week. It might be a slide that you did last week. Uh, maybe when your colleagues created it. Maybe when I'm working with Alice, she created this great paragraph or this great table that I'd want to reuse again. So what will be coming pretty soon is that you can go in and say, if I search for famous female mathematicians, and uh, let me just search for that. Now today that'll actually just search the web and you could, I could actually you know, add in, say, a citation here. If I want to do cite this website, and that's neat. But another way I could do is so that's great. It gives a nice citation with just one click to that website. But what we're also going to be doing pretty soon is, if I do smart look up, it not only will actually search the web, but it'll also search all your files. So there's this other file here, which I just created last night which is this table of famous female mathematicians. And what we'll do is we'll show that table here on the side pane and with one click, you can bring that table in and reuse content without actually having to open the other Word document. So this is a great feature when you're in your school and you're trying to reuse slide content because you'll be able to pull in diagrams from slides and PowerPoint or from tables and other Word documents. So whether it's content you created or it's content your colleagues created. Again, just really kind of optimizing for reuse of content, which is something that we all do when we're actually creating these documents. I reuse so much content. Like, let's just even say I had a rubric. Would this be a good example? So this is how I would score students. I have a table. Could I just now use this smart lookup 
would the reuse content to slide rubrics into my students documents? Totally. You yeah. could just do a one click, just search for that. My face is on here right now, but I'm speechless with like, oh my gosh. No, and this will work not only with Word documents and PowerPoints, but also with PDF. Uh, so, um, and <laughs> it's really, I'm probably I'm sharing it prematurely, but you, with one click, That's you can pull in paragraphs and tables and images from any of these content without leaving your Word document and just keep on doing your work. Well, I can't wait to share that when that comes out because that will save a teacher. I can't even imagine how much time that will save teachers because, you know, if I'm a high school teacher, I've got 150 students. It's not too unusual that I need to slide some content in frequently, like a, a rubric or maybe a, a follow up thing that I would want to do, um, common feedback. That, that We all do that. Yeah, it could even be like when you're reusing kind of like lessons from last semester and you know you had a really good diagram in your presentation oh that God. you want to reuse in the word document Ew. or you had a really good paragraph you want to reuse it again big time saver uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> i just want to do a whole webinar on that you should do a whole webinar on I, that one I, we promise when you when it comes out you'll be able to do you'll have so much fun with that feature oh, um yes i will have so much fun with that feature it's Ridiculous how much fun I have with very small things, um, but that is like a big thing and I'm very and, excited. And I'll just show one more thing just because okay. just opportunistically. One sure. thing when you were talking about navigation. One thing that we do, we notice that some people and I know Alice, you're going to get really annoyed when I say this because you can't believe people do this, but it's quite common. A lot of people don't use styles at all for headings or subheadings. They don't do it at all. Now, what they'll do is they will um, they'll type this is um, I don't know the title, and then they'll highlight this. Mm -hmm. and they'll say, okay, I'll make it look like a title, and I'll make it really big. I'll make it bold and so on and they'll make it caps and they'll make it look like a type type title and they'll fake it out well they do that's exactly what they do super common right because people don't yeah. use styles super we common. Just, we just understand now the problem with that yes it looks great in your word document and it kind of gets you by but it's not great for accessibility it's not great for screen readers so what we have here with then it with navigation which we I, we can show you at, at another time is you see this feature down the bottom here? Automatically detect headings. It'll automatically detect what it thinks is a title or a subtitle and will actually convert them and suggest they should actually be titles. So for those people who actually don't use styles and they have this habit of actually creating kind of, you know, titles that are just faked out to be titles and subtitles, or maybe you have an old world a Word document mm -hmm. that was created maybe two years ago or you inherited from a colleague that doesn't have the right styling, you can use this automatically detect headings to convert those headings into real headings so you but can it actually satisfy them. Yeah, it, it detects, doesn't just detect them, it converts them. Yeah, automatically detects headings and converts them. That is so, a killer feature. Again, it's just a smart feature for again recognizing that you know some people don't use styles and you might have some old documents that you want to make accessible. So it's a neat little feature to have. I certainly can't speak for all classes everywhere, but I think that that teaching people that they need to use titles is just not a common thing that people are even taught. Like, why would you even think to do that? To use titles headings. Uh, it, it's really a function of the web, right? I mean, it's not really it. It's a function of the web, which pretty much didn't exist when I was a child. So my teachers couldn't have even taught me that if they wanted to. Yeah, exactly. So awesome. Thank you for sharing those. Those are, I, I, I am blown away. I had no idea you were going to share those things. And now I'm like wicked excited uh, to do these. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, and if we could uh, just go over a few of the questions. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Let's do questions. That'd be great. Then we have some over here. Can you assign follow ups to other people in a shared document? You can actually do at mention people in your organization. You can actually at mention 
Alice Keeler. I can't do it right now in this demo because we're using this test document that's shared across uh, our different organizations. But yes, what I would do normally, I could do app mention Alice Keeler. Please do this in this section here where it says um, app screen sharing your content. Do you have my screen sharing? Well, it is, but she just has you pushed onto your face. So. Oh, OK. So if I'm on the um, yeah. here and I do my little trick we did, I said what I would normally do in my organization would be I go Alice um, Keeler. Can you please uh, add the table of um, lessons here? Um, mm -hmm. That will work. So. Okay. That's that's uh, that's how you do it. That's how it work in your organization. What's the other question? All right, there are a few of them. Is there a way to add comments but with audio and microphone? No, but it's a great idea, and it's definitely something that we're actually um, thinking about. That is definitely something we talk about pretty frequently. Oh. The idea of adding comments with either voice or video or with ink, they all seem very appealing. And we could definitely see the great use case for them. Yeah. The default for sharing is to make it editable. Is it possible to share it with view only without having to click through multiple steps? We still have to, you have to go through the multiple steps. So there's no way to actually set the default just to be view only. Okay. When converting using Sway, is the document live for future changes or does it need to be refreshed through the file menu when changes are complete? Needs to be refreshed. So uh, so are they linked? So my assumption was that if I, it, it's that moment in time when I create the yeah. Sway from the Word document, if I make updates in the Word document, it won't update my Sway. Right. It's, it's a publish metaphor. So yeah. it's like publishing to a web page. And you might you could then create, keep on working on your work document, iterate with your colleagues, and then at some point in the future you might say, hey, we need to refresh the web page. Let's publish again. Yeah, so but then it would be a new link if you publish it again. If you create a new sway, yes, it would be. Okay. So just want to confirm that. That's what I thought it would be. And someone now you could you could always go in for obviously for people who use sway, you can always go into sway itself and edit content directly too. That's exactly the way to do it. If if once you've made your Sway, you want to uh, update the information, you're now living in Sway and that's where all updates yeah. would go. So uh, someone also had asked if they needed to have the headings set up in, in the Word document before they created the Sway. If you don't need to have the headings set up, I mean, if you have the headings set up, it's great. Sway will detect those headings and make use of them. But if you don't have the heading set up, you can go back into Sway and add them yourself. And Sway is really easy. Like we designed Sway over several years to make it like to make it super easy to actually use. I remember I was asking, um, I think it was, was it four, fifth grade or fourth? No, it was fourth graders. I was asking the teacher why they use Sway. And they were saying because it takes them about 20 minutes to teach the kids how to use Sway. So pretty easy to add content to Sway and add headings to Sway. Yeah, uh, so my recommendation was, no, you don't have to, but you know, the more you get your Word document the way you like it, the less editing you'll have to do once exactly. the Sway populates. I mean, it's obviously taking a guess at what you want it to look like. And then of course the beauty is I'm not stuck with it. Yeah. I am able to go in and add extra pictures. I'm like, no, I don't like how it put this but I would ideally like to just push transform and go. So setting it's that up. A pretty neat way. I use it sometimes for if I want to get something really beautiful, really quickly, and I want to be able to send it to somebody. On, I know they're going to read on their mobile phone. I want something compelling. And yet, um, it's just a great way to do something really quick like that. And it's just a bit of a delighter. And so what about chemical equations are they easy to insert on the web version not yet so equation the equation editor and i'm sure alice this is probably near and dear to your heart is um definitely high on our list of things they're going to be working on all right it is i obviously get that a lot and and science teachers really 
yeah. one of the equation capabilities. Do you know anything about Equasio? I know that works with Office. Does I can look into that one. Version? Okay. I can look into an Equasio. Yeah, I can have a check. I can check into that one. So for those of you who don't know, Equasio works with Microsoft Word desktop and it allows you to insert chemical equations and map symbols. And I just am unsure. Why don't I follow up um, offline with you and you can then share it out in Twitter. And I can follow up offline on that one. And that might be, how does Word Online compare to Office 365 version of Word or are they the same? The same, when you actually get, get your Office 365 subscription, you get access to Word Desktop for the Mac, Windows, and Web. And there's also actually a free version of Word Desk, uh, Word Web as well. So the free version has some of the basic capabilities, and then the subscription um, version has actually more capabilities. But okay. yeah, you should, with your uh, O365 subscription, you already, you already have it. And you know, one thing that what I found is, you know, some people don't know about Word Web and they're so used to the desktop, but I would definitely encourage you to go, you know, try it out and push it and embrace it. And we're going to continue to keep on working hard to add more and more. And I would love, by the way, the thing I was going to say to you earlier on, Alice, yeah. I mean, I would love to share this other presentation I have over here, which is all the features that are coming in the next six months. But right. I can't let's, share with you yet because it's not so oh. I can't, but it's all coming in the next six months. Under NDA. And it's so exciting. I mean, it really is. I mean, I'd love to, I can't wait to show you those features in the next six months. There's some really cool stuff coming. We're putting a lot of work into the product. Awesome. And then how far back does document history go? Um, document history. I would say at a guess a few months, I would say. That's my guess. I'd have to check on that one, what the exact limit in, but I would say I have a guess a few months on that one. Do you know how often it records the document changes? I think it's every session, every time you make an edit, and then every time you actually end a session. Okay. All right. And is Word Online free? There's a free version of Word Online. So the way that works is there's a free, say, take the um, editor version here. You know, the free version has uh, just a few of the actual capabilities. The paid version has a lot more of the capabilities, and that's how it really differs a lot. But the, the free version has a fully functioning kind of Word uh, product in itself. And um, I, I will tell you that the free version does not have the transform to sway, and I'm really disappointed about that. <laughs> That's because I said, if you're serious. <laughs> no, I am, because I was using it on a different account that I don't really use very often. That's so I'm true. Like, oh, I want to use these. I literally wanted to use some Word online features, an account that doesn't have Office 365. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just go to word.office.com. And I just, it took me, I don't know, 30 seconds to make an account, right? And then I'm in there and I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, no, no. No, there's no transform to sweat. You love the transform feature. You really do. It's your favorite feature by far. That's why I said you couldn't have it. Uh, <laughs> so when you. No, oh, sorry. by the way, just one thing I didn't mention. I should have mentioned this. Um, there's also a, a Chrome extension for mm. editors. You want to show that? Um, I don't have it on here, but I can actually link here. I can do a link if I search for um, Microsoft Chrome extension. Um, I should have actually installed this on this machine. Okay, if you want to send it to me, I'll include it in the blog post. Yeah, and it's cool because it's you have this Chrome extension, and then Editor then actually um, works then with lots of other writing surfaces that you might want to use uh, Editor. So it's got that full capabilities of Editor that works across not just Word, but across all your various different kind of writing surfaces. Okay, so one of my favorite MIEs has asked a question in the Q&A, Adam Grocott. He is also a math teacher, and it is no surprise to me that his question involves OneNote. He's OneNote Adam. So are Word online documents able to keep embedded into OneNote 
that will keep changes made to the document. So you want to take a Word document, embed it in um, a OneNote, and then and so then be able, as you change the Word document, they actually they update in the actual OneNote. Yes, and he says more specifically distributed through Class Notebook. That's one I'm going to follow up with you on, on the distribution. I was about to say yes, but I want to follow up on the distribution to Class Notebook. So, yeah. Alice, why don't I take that as a follow up on to make sure I don't want to give the wrong answer there, to, uh, but it's a good question. And I will check back with uh, with the OneNote team and with Class Notebooks with Mike Tholson and to see it is actually that scenario, but it's a great scenario. It is a good scenario. So. If I can figure out how to screen share back on this one. No, I can't. I lost it. So I just would really like to thank Peter Leonard for joining me today. Word Online. I I was really like excited about it and now I'm extra excited about it. Uh, thanks for sharing those and thanks everyone for joining. So thank and I, just a, a big ask if you've got ideas or suggestions or scenarios we go, oh my God, where to make the big difference? One question that I told Alice last night, I often ask people is, what's the one feature that if we delivered it in Word in the next six months, that would make such a big difference to you in your day-to-day -day work life, that you'd be willing to pay for it, even with your own credit card, if even your school didn't pay for it? I'm not saying that I want you to do that, but it would just give me a really good sense of the ones that would really make a big difference to you in your life. Yeah. Um, so, just you know, what what would make a really big difference to you and the um, in schools it would really be great to know because that will really help us inform what we're doing and keep us grounding in terms of delivering value to where you're doing your work. I want that insert rubric thing that you're already making. The reuse thing. Yeah. You get that. That's coming. <laughs> That's gonna be great. All right. Well, thank you everybody. Thanks for thank joining you. me. Thank Take care. You. Bye. Bye.